Okay, so welcome to this video on odontoma, which I guess is fifth on a series on the odontogenic tumors. Anyways, head on to our channel, subscribe to the channel and make sure to make full use of the playlist on odontogenic tumors as well as the ever-building playlist on oral pathology. So getting right into odontoma. Now, odontoma is essentially one of those tumors where I prefer to study the definition upfront. Right, let's go over one by one over the definition because the rest of it is really easy. Starting with a brief overview, it is a hamartoma of odontogenic origin in which there is both epithelial and mesenchymal cell differentiation with enamel and dentin laid down in an abnormal position. So let's go over this one more time. So the first part here, it tells us that odontoma is essentially a hamartoma. It's not a neoplastic process, it is a hamartoma. And what is a hamartoma? Hamartoma is a developmental malformation where there is an abnormal proliferation or a disorganized mass of cells in a location indigenous to them. So this is a native location to these cells. Now an odontoma is considered a hamartoma because of its limited growth potential as well as the lack of recurrence. Okay, so so far it's clear that this is considered more of a hamartoma. The second part of the statement indicates that this is a mixed tumor. So it arises from two components, the epithelial and the mesenchymal. So if this is considered to be our epithelial component, then this entire thing is the mesenchymal component. It derives from the cells of both the epithelial and the mesial component in such a way that it happens in such a stage of odontogenesis that the cells are functional, but they have not finished morphodifferentiation. Okay, so although they are functional, there is functional ameloblast, there is functional odontoblast, they do lay down enamel and dentin, but in an abnormal manner. So it lays down enamel and dentin in a half a sad manner, much like the streets of my city. So all in all, we know that this is a hamartoma. It's a mixed tumor with epithelial and mesenchymal cell differentiation, where enamel and dentin is laid down in an abnormal position. There's one more thing about the name where it tells us that this is a composite odontome. And this is essentially because there is more than one type of heart tissue formed, right? So if you look into this diagram, you see these enamel spaces, which were once covered by enamel. And then you would see this entirely scattered denting, cementum, as well as pulp. So there is more than one type of tissue here. And this is why it is called a composite odontome. So, so far, we have completed the definition as well as the name. Now, it can be classified into compound and complex based on the manner that enamel and dentine are laid. If they are laid down in such a fashion that the structure bears a resemblance to a normal tooth in some way, it is called compound. Okay, so although these structures are smaller than normal teeth, they do in some way resemble the morphological appearance of a normal tooth. This is why it is called the compound composite odontome. The complex, on the other hand, it is just an irregular mass of calcified tissue. Okay, with certain radio density, it is just a calcified mass of hard tissue and it does not bear a similarity even to a rudimentary tooth. And this is why it is called the complex. In its etiopathogenesis, the exact cause is unknown, but it is thought to be a result of trauma, infection, and genetic mutation. The final result of which is an altered ectomesenchyme interaction as I told you in the first video. The interaction between the epithelium and the ectomesenchyme, it is altered, which results in the formation of epithelial and mesenchymal cells with complete differentiation, laying down enamel and dentin, but in a half hazard manner because of the lack of morphodifferentiation. Before we move into the easiest part, which is the clinical features, the histopathological features and the radiographic features, I have two questions for you. What are the two types of odontoma and why is odontoma called composite? Please answer this before you move into the next slides. So getting into the clinical features, it can be discovered at any age, but it is more often seen in younger individuals, especially in the second decade, average age 15 years, especially when the normal dentition is developing. There is a slight male predilection and the most common site of occurrence overall is the maxilla. Now there is again a variation. Remember, I told you odontoma is classified into compound and complex. So again in this, we see that uh, compound, it uh, has a predilection for the anterior maxilla, 
while the complex has a predilection for uh, posterior mandible even in this compound is more common out of complex so the overall predilection is in the maxilla both of these affect the right side of the jaw and it presents as an asymptomatic swelling okay so it is often discovered on routine examination and the most common cause that a patient would come to you for is because of the failure of eruption of another tooth okay so it is often associated with an unerupted tooth or an impacted deciduous tooth as well as infection and occasionally it might uh, not be just small in size it might grow large enough to cause bone and facial asymmetry the best part about this is the radiographic features because they are very uh, conclusive compound has a famous name related to it which is a bag of tooth appearance okay so it essentially appears like a collection or a bag of tooth like structures of varying size and densities which are covered by a radiolucent zone the complex again on the other hand it bears no resemblance to a tooth it's just a calcified mass with a radio density which is also surrounded by a narrow radiolucent zone now another thing to notice both of these are associated with unerupted teeth okay so both of these are associated with unerupted teeth and sometimes are present between roots the histopathological features again they provide no diagnostic dilemma it is essentially composed it's a composite odontoma we see our classic dentine we see enamel spaces and we see pulpal tissue and cementum now in this diagram you can very well make out the scattered dentine but you can't make out the enamel and this is because of the decalcification procedure that we have studied in first year right so enamel is lost due to decalcification in histological sections but you do see certain areas of hypomineralized enamel okay so these areas are hypomineralized areas of enamel matrix again if we look into the diagram you can make out the difference between compound and complex as in the radiographic features even the histopathological features it sort of recapitulates the organization of a normal tooth okay so very well you can make out here this is predentin this is dentin this is the enamel space and these are odontoblasts you can make out that this is trying to resemble a normal tooth the complex on the other hand it has no uh, relevance to this it's just a disorganized mass of hard tissue you have scattered enamel spaces here and there you have dentine scattered everywhere there is cementum this is pulp so this appears as a disorganized mass and compound resembles more of a tooth the lesion the entire lesion it is surrounded by a fibrous capsule and the dentinal tissues they lie in direct contact with the ct resembling the dental pulp there is often also the presence of ghost cells as seen in the calcifying odontogenic cyst the management it includes surgical removal especially if it is impinging the eruption of another tooth or if it is causing a periodontal abscess With this I guess we have completed everything relevant to odontoma. I have another final question for you which is uh, an MCQ based question. The radiographic features of multiple tooth like structures surrounded by a radiolucent zone are diagnostic of which of the following? Okay? To conclude the lecture we started by studying that this is a hamartoma of odontogenic origin where both epithelial and mesenchymal cells they exhibit complete differentiation laying down enamel and dentine. We saw it's a uh, two subtypes which are the compound and complex we also saw why it was called the composite odontoma we saw in brief about its etiopathogenesis as well as we saw the most common sites of predilection being the anterior maxilla then we saw the radiographic features as well as the histopathological features where overall compound greatly resembled a normal tooth i also gave you about three questions and i really hope you answer them because that would help you get a grip on the topic with this we come to the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe to the channel comment something let's stay tuned and i hope to see you forward in more videos thank you so much and have a great day